Hello from children's publisher Troika. We're here to celebrate National Poetry Day 2021. This year, the theme for National Poetry Day is choice. So we've brought together 10 poets with 10 poems that explore choice in lots of different ways. In this video, you can watch our poets performing their poems. We've also put together a resource pack with a bunch of ideas for using our poems for your own learning and creative activities. We'll tell you a bit more about that at the end, but if you're keen to dive in, you'll find it online. Now, let's hear some poems. To kick off, here's Neil Zetter with a fun choice to make. What to wear? I won't wear a wizard outfit wand and black moustache. I won't wear a blonde wig as I look completely daft. I won't wear a monster suit with googly eyes. I won't wear a cape unless it helps me to fly. I won't wear the whiskers, tail and claws of a cat. I won't wear a 10 gallon cowboy hat. I won't wear a leotard or a long white nighty. I won't wear a pirate's beard that's prickly and spiky. I won't wear armour as it's sure to rust and creak. I won't wear a clown nose with big floppy feet. I won't wear the costume of a giant bumblebee. Because at your fancy dress party, I'll be going as me. Good for you, Neil. Sometimes it takes courage to choose to be yourself and come exactly as you are. Next up, favourites. We all have different likes and dislikes, things we choose to say yes or no to. Here's Ed Boxall with a favourite question with a twist. Who is your favourite colour? Is it that wizard white made of glistening icy light? Is it that hero red from the neon city night? Is your favourite the fairy green running lightly over leaves? Or dreamy dragon pink, made of soft evening breeze? Is it the traveller grey, trudging wearily through the rain? Or maybe Mother Yellow, saying hello, home again? Could it be Clown Orange, who refuses to rhyme? Or the silent spirit bird blue, from beyond space and time? Who? Is your favourite colour? Hmm, I love the way Ed gives the colours so much character. Now, speaking of space and time, how do you choose to spend your time? Especially if you don't have much of it. Here's Zara Weil with just 10 minutes. 10 minute poem. There are only 10 minutes left to go. Should I get up and get ready to leave now? Um, or should I keep doing this for nine minutes more? Or climb a tree in eight minutes or bake a cake in seven minutes or write a book in six minutes or make an important scientific discovery during the next five minutes. Ah, or compose a symphony in four minutes or save my country in three minutes, or circumnavigate the globe in two minutes, or explore the Milky Way in one minute, or, 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 or. Too late, the bell rings. Here's Trevor Millam, not really choosing at all. Bell rings, you rise. Voice calls, you eat. Radio gives time, you leave. Diesel-powered vehicle arrives, you board. Vehicle halts, you walk. Bell rings, you enter. Bell rings, you sit. Your name is called, Trevor? you speak. Bell rings, you move. Bell rings, you move. Bell rings, you eat. Bell rings, you sit. Bell rings, you stand. Bell rings, you jump. Bell rings, rings, rings. You queue. Vehicle halts. You board. It stops. You walk. Voice speaks. You nod. Voice shouts. Hey. You answer. 
you eat. Radio sings, you listen. TV says time, you move. Set clock, it ticks, you sleep and dream. You really not machine. Being able to make choices is one of the things that makes us humans very different from machines. But sometimes it feels like we're becoming slaves to some of our machines. Do we have a choice in that? Here's Brian Moses. Instead of an Xbox, please show me a pathway that stretches to the stars. Instead of a mobile phone, please teach me the language I need to help me speak with angels. Instead of a computer, please reveal to me the mathematics of meteors and moonbeams. Instead of the latest computer game, please come with me on a search for dragons in the wood behind our house. Instead of an e-reader, please read to me from a book of ancient knowledge. Instead of a digital camera, please help me remember faces and places, mystery and moonbeams. Instead of a 3D TV, please take me to an empty world that I could people with my imagination. Instead of electronic wizardry, please show me how to navigate the wisdom inside of me. The wisdom inside. I like that. And Bernard Young, our next poet, is going to need some. He has a choice to make about how to respond to a friend who's being anything but friendly. Best friends. Would a best friend eat your last sweet? Talk about you behind your back? Have a party and not ask you? Mine did. Would a best friend borrow your bike without telling you? Deliberately forget your birthday? Avoid you whenever possible? Mine did. Would a best friend turn up on your bike? Give you a whole packet of your favourite sweets? Look you in the eye? Mine did. Would a best friend say, Sorry I talked about you behind your back. Sorry I had a party and didn't invite you. Sorry I deliberately forgot your birthday. I thought you'd fallen out with me. Mine did. And would a best friend say simply, Never mind. That's okay. I did. How we treat other people. It's such an important choice and not always an easy one. And talking of other people, what if they choose to see things one way and you choose to see them another? Here's Sue Hardy Dawson with that very dilemma. On Monday, in the clouds, I saw a polar bear king riding a glittering horse. Across a cornflower sky on a flock of crimson leaves. On Tuesday, among flowers, I saw a fat bumblebee, dusty with pollen gold, and heard the dry sigh of wind in the old oak tree. On Wednesday, by the path, I saw a pearl pale worm in a puddle pool, left it safe and dry after a slight detour on the way back from P.E. On Thursday, on the glass, I saw two giant raindrops and watched them race. They took a long time, almost all of DT. On Friday, Mrs. Greenwood saw, not much maths, no story. She said something about making better choices. Well, FYI, this week I've peaked. Sue chooses to put her attention on nature over classroom lessons. But what if there isn't a choice? What if the nature around us is being taken away? Here's Dom Conlon. This tree and me. This tree and me are here to see the rivers and the sky. But as the distant diggers work, I hear the wildlife cry. As they are driven from their home, so track and road might grow. With city spread and climate change, they've nowhere else to go. With fewer places now in town where I can run and play, this tree and me 
are here to see. But I can walk away. Sometimes we could walk away, but we choose not to. In the next poem, Shauna Darling Robertson really doesn't know what to do for the best. He said he would definitely come, so I sit, or I stand, and I wait. I trust in him, smart move or dumb. Last Tuesday I overheard Mum on the phone to him saying the date. He said he would definitely come. I'm sure when he does we'll have fun, and I'm certain he's just running late. I trust in him, smart move or dumb. On some days I feel almost numb, and then sometimes I get in a state. He said so, he promised he'd come. Outside, feeling lost, I chew gum and fix both my eyes on the gate, still trusting him, smart move or dumb. Come on, love, let's head out, says Mum. I say, no thanks, I'd far rather stay. He loves me, I'm sure that he'll come. I trust in him, smart move or dumb. Some choices are really, really hard to make. They just are. To finish, here's Coral Rumble. The gulls circle, screaming, and I'm lost in the echo and the hollow of the sound. The beach is deserted, the weather is turning, like Grandad predicted as he sniffed at the air and tethered his boat firmly. One more week and I'll be home, walking down sheltered alleyways between tall buildings, past the iron gates that shield the school where my screaming rang too loud for teachers, where the storms in my head shipwrecked me to suspension. Grandad wrinkles his face into a smile as he suggests a mug of tea in the shelter of the pavilion, away from the air thick with raindrops. I know he will sail his questions gently towards me, always a wise mariner, until I am sure, in my own mind, whether I should live with mum or dad. There are so many different choices we all make. We hope you've enjoyed our small selection of poems, and if you'd like to use them to explore the theme of choice a bit more, and to have a go at things like reading aloud, a bit of acting, some writing or some painting or drawing, again you can check out our free resource online here. You can find details of all of our books on Troika's website. And you'll also find more resources for teachers and librarians here. If you make some choice poems of your own or some artwork, we'd love to see them. Tag us on Twitter at Troika Books. Bye for now.